Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to our lecture today. Uh, our guest speaker is Fernanda Paljano Fontes. Uh, she's an electrical engineer with double degrees, one from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte in the city of Natal, Brazil, and another from the École Nationale Supérieure d'Electrotechnique uh, at Toulouse, France. She earned her master's and PhD in neurosciences from the Brain Institute of UFRN. Uh, and during her master's program, she used functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, to evaluate the acute effect of ayahuasca. In her doctoral thesis, she investigated the therapeutic potential of ayahuasca in patients with treatment resistant depression. And currently, she's employed at, uh, a as a research engineer at the Brain Institute, UFRN. Um, her main areas of interest are psychedelics, psychiatry, and imaging uh, techniques such as fMRI and electroencephalography. So welcome, Fernanda, and thank you for being our uh, guest speaker today. Thank you, Paloma. Thank you, Rian, also for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I want to apologize for the delay <laughs> and let's start. So uh, today I will talk about um, a clinical trial uh, we made here in Natal, Brazil, at the UFRN, this uh, Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte, uh, to investigate the potential antidepressant effect, effects of ayahuasca for treatment-resistant depression. So I will start talking about ayahuasca. Uh, I don't know uh, if you are familiar with uh, this, um, this substance, but um, ayahuasca is a psychedelic brew from Amazonia origin and has uh, been used for centuries by indigenous and indigenous populations and has also a strong uh, syncretic ritual use um, here in Brazil, but also spread around the world. So uh, some religions group uh, use this, uh, this beverage as a sacrament, as for example, the Santo Daime and the Union do Vegetal, Vegetal Union. Vegetal union. Uh, and this uh, church, they have branches also in Europe, in US, and Australia, and in many, many countries. Um, the most common uh, preparation of ayahuasca is the mixture of two plants, the Psychotria viridis and the Banisteria obscap. Um, from a pharmacological point of view, what these uh, plants they uh, bring for the, the, this brew. So the leaves of the Psychotra viridis uh, contains the psychedelic tryptamine called NN dimethyl tryptamine. So this molecule is the part, uh, the, the psychedelic, the psychoactive part of the, the, the substance. On the other hand, the Banisteriopsca api, which is a liana, has mal inhibitors, beta carbolines uh, from uh, uh, armina, armaline, and the tetroid hydrohamine also. Uh, one characteristic of this uh, NN dimethyltryptamine, which is called DMT, DMT, the DMT, when orally ingested, is degraded by some enzymes we have in our uh, gastrointestinal tract which is the monoamine oxidase enzyme. So when taken in combination, we take the, the, DMT, the DMT in combination with those uh, beta carbolines, these beta carbolines has, uh, have, uh, which are MAO inhibitors, will prevent the degradation, the deamination of the DMT, and then ayahuasca, and the DMT can has uh, his uh, its uh, neuro uh, this this uh, brain effects the central uh, nervous system effects. So 
it's uh, when someone is under the effect of ayahuasca, uh, it can have a lot of effects from somatic effect, effects as changing in, in sensations of the body, sensation of the body temperature, the time sensations. Also, one part of this uh, phenomenology, which is very uh, known, is this uh, visual phenomena that can be sim uh, simple as um, geometric patterns, but also very complex scenes as in a dream. And this uh, change in perception, this, this uh, change in, in visual perceptions is more common with the eyes closed. So when with the eyes closed, people uh, see those uh, images. And we have also a lot of cognitive effects, which can be changes in thought, the way of some one, one thought, um, feeling more uh, smart, for example, having sights, changing mood, in effect, in awareness, and also a perception of space-time and reality. So those effects normally start uh, 20 minutes after the, after the intake and lasts for four hours. After that, those uh, changes uh, uh, stop. In our lab, we conducted some research trying to understand which are the neural correlates of the psychedelic state provoked by ayahuasca. So we use the neuroimage technique called fMRI, so functional, functional magnetic resonance image, to acquire brain images uh, from the brain of volunteers that were under the effect of ayahuasca. So we did a series of, uh, of uh, fMRI protocols with a group of volunteers that were experienced volunteers, so they, they, they uh, were regular use of ayahuasca. And we did an fMRI before and other one during the effect of ayahuasca. And what kind of uh, effects we investigated? In this uh, first work, we investigated these uh, changes in mental imagery. So we had this uh, visual protocol and people had to see an image and then with the eyes closed, imagine the same image they just had saw. Mm -hmm. And what you see, what we have in this uh, study is that if we found that the brain regions that are normally uh, activated when someone is viewing uh, with the eyes open, are activated also when people are under the effect of ayahuasca and imagining something with the eyes closed. So we had the activation of V1, the visual, uh, the primary visual cortex, in the same, the same level of intensity that, uh, comp that's comparable with when someone is in, indeed with the eyes open and see something. Uh, another aspect that we investigated, it was the DMN, so the default mode network. Uh, this, uh, this network is uh, a, a set of brain regions that are more uh, activated when someone is um, thinking about themselves, uh, imagine the past, uh, remember the past, imagine the future. So uh, it's a set of regions that are activated when someone is uh, uh, doing some uh, self-related processing. And what we uh, observed, it was that during the effects of ayahuasca, this uh, activity and connectivity, functional connectivity of the DMN was reduced. This is the case also for the psilocybin 
and the, L, uh, the LSD also. And I think that today this is like um, a bio, I, I can see, I can say that it's almost like a biomarker from a psychedelic experience. When someone is under a psychedelic experience, uh, this uh, network is, uh, has its activity reduced. We also use some, um, some network approaches as these uh, studies in uh, using complex network approaches to investigate to investigate in a more uh, general uh, way, in a global way, what kind of changes ayahuasca can cause. And what you see here in this, uh, this work, it's the channel entropy, which is a measure of how, uh, how disorganized are, or, or how the connections of the brain are more or less connected. Uh, so in, in this case, we, we divide the brain in a set of regions like 10, uh, 100 brain regions, and we can calculate it how each one are correlated with the other. And what you see with ayahuasca is that we had more connections. So the brain in a global way is more connected. So regions that are normally not connected with uh, each other, under the effect of ayahuasca, they are connected. So all these results that I talked were about the acute effects. So when people were really experience the effects of ayahuasca. But we also know that ayahuasca can cause uh, sub uh, subacute effects, so like one day, two days, and seven days after the session. So we know that we can observe changes in personality as increased in openness, confidence, and optimism, enhance mindfulness capacities as uh, increased the acceptance and reduced judgmental processing, and changes in creativity. In that sense, we also uh, had some preliminary studies showing that ayahuasca can have the can have this uh, antidepressant effect. So uh, our group did this um, study in 2006. Started in 2006, and we evaluated six patients that have this kind of depression that we called. Uh, treatment-resistant depression, which is, uh, it's, let's say, a, a patient that tried at least two conventional uh, drugs and don't get better. So they don't improve uh, the symptoms uh, of depression. Here we see uh, the, the severity of depression as, me as measured by uh, um, depression scale. And we see that during the time, the symptoms of depression are reduced. And this reduction starts already one day after the session and lasts for 21 days. In a second, well, yeah, <laughs> sorry. In a second study, we increase the number of participants for 17. And we also um, did um, I expect uh, scanner, um, a single uh, a tomography to, to see the, the activity of the brain. And we saw the same results or the, 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 the patients uh, start to decrease their uh, depression symptoms already during the session in this case, and this improvement lasts for 21 days, for two, three weeks. And also we, we saw uh, changes in brain regions as the amygdala, insula, and the cingulate cortex, which are 
regions associated with depression and emotional uh, emotional processes. So those results uh, are very uh, very promising, very important and very promising. Uh, but in these uh, two studies, we had a, a, a limitation that was we did not control for the placebo effect. So the placebo effect, it's, it's when some patients respond to the treatment, even if the treatment is uh, water or that uh, you are not doing, uh, uh, giving a real medication. So in, in depression, this can happen uh, with 40% of the patients in a clinical trial. So 40% of the patients will uh, respond to a placebo. So it's why we conduct uh, a follow-up study, this time using uh, a gold standard protocol for the pharmaceuticals, which is the randomized double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial. So here it's an overview of the protocol. So the, patient, uh, the patients stayed uh, with us uh, during four days, and we did a lot of assessments that include psychiatric scales, neuropsychological uh, tests, M uh, fMRI scanner, sleep EG, saliva and blood collection, and also uh, we applied also some psychedelic scales. So the patient arrived here uh, the first day, and we did all these assessments. They slept at the hospital, and the next day was the day of the session, so the, the dosing session. Uh, during the dosing session, they were mon uh, we uh, acquired uh, electro um, EEG data also during the, the session. And at the end of the session, we applied some psychedelic scales and they went home. The next day, they come to the hospital again and we did the same thing, the same battery of uh, exams and assessments that we did the first day. And this, the, the, the last day, we, uh, they did the last psychiatric evaluations and they went home. Seven days late, we asked them to return to the hospital for a follow-up assessment with the psychiatrist. So the, the trial was a parallel arm trial. A half of the participants uh, took ayahuasca, other half took placebo. We used a dose of one milliliter per kilogram of ayahuasca or placebo. And our uh, ayahuasca, uh, the sample of ayahuasca that we use had uh, zero, 0.36 uh, milligrams per milliliter of DMT and that uh, compositions of the, the beta carbolines. We had, we assessed 35 patients with treatment resistant depression. And also we include a group of health volunteers, 50 health volunteers. This was the, the room where the sessions uh, took place. It was at the hospital and the participants were in this recliner, this, this recliner all the time. And I, and me and my, my boss, he is he, we were at all the time during the sessions, not in the same room of the participants, but we are like next, in the next room. We are like seeing the participants, but not too close. And during the session, we had some the sometimes that the, the psychiatrists entered the room to to to, to uh, evaluate the patient. So after the intake, one hour and forty minutes, two hours and forty minutes, and four hours after the intake, the psychiatrists came to make these uh, evaluations. So the first result I want to talk about, it's uh, in the, the, the main result, 
is that ayahuasca showed a rapid antidepressant effect. So here in this graph, you can see here in the y-axis is the MADRIS score. So MADRIS is uh, a psychiatric scale uh, as, that assess depressive symptoms. The great values indicate severe depression and small values here indicate less severe depression. Here we have the time baseline or before the treatment, one day after, two days, and seven days after the treatment. And I want to remember it was only uh, one session, so one dose in session. And here in red, we can see the ayahuasca group and in blue, the placebo group. So we can see that at the beginning, both groups has uh, severe depression and almost the same. And one day after the dosing, we had this uh, decrease in, in, in depressive symptoms from, um, from both groups. But ayahuasca shows uh, a great decrease than the placebo. And for ayahuasca group, this reduction is maintained until seven days, while the placebo group worsen the, 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 the symptoms. And at seven days uh, after the dosing, we can observe at almost the same level of depression. So in our case, we found the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, difference between groups seven days after the dosing. We also conduct some secondary analysis in this data. Uh, looking only for a, a, sp a specific question of this scale, the Madrid scale, related to suicidality. Swiss, suicidality. So suicidal ideation. And what you see here, the, the graphs are very similar. So uh, in red, we have ayahuasca, and we see that we had this uh, huge decrease in, this, in the suicidality. And that's not observed in placebo. So here in this case, we don't have this uh, between group effects here, but we think that the problem is for the placebo, they don't have this uh, initial ideation, suicidal ideation. So maybe it's why. But we think the ayahuasca group we observed that uh, reduction in suicidality. And this was a collaboration with this uh, Canadian research, uh, Richard, uh, Rick Zeifman. Okay, so uh, this is very interesting and we are like very happy to, to have these results, but one question that arises is why? So why we are observing this antidepressant effect of ayahuasca? So we want to, wanted to investigate the potential mechanisms of action. Uh, nowadays, we are ob observing a, a very fruitful discussion about whether or not what happened during the sessions can have an impact in the outcomes. So uh, some people argue that yes, the subjective effects during the session are important to the, to the positive outcome. And others say, no, it's only a biological process that's changing and this is why we have this, uh, this uh, therapeutic effect. So to investigate that, we try to relate it something that happened, happened during the session with the antidepressant effect. So one of the questionnaires we applied was this uh, HRS, which is a hallucinogenic rating scale that assess some aspects of the psychedelic experience as the intensity, uh, changes in cognition, perception, effect. And what we observed, it's uh, that 
the patients who improved more seven days after the dosing or that had more changes in perception. So more changes in perception during the session led to great improvement in the depression symptoms seven days after the dosing. Um, so this is not a causation, it's only correlation. And so, and we had like few, uh, not too many pace, patients. So it's uh, only a suggestion, but it seems that what's happening during the session may have a role in how uh, we have this, this uh, positive outcome. On the other hand, we also collect saliva and blood samples. And we did a lot of... Um, Fernanda? Uh, yes. To interrupt, you just wanted to ask, uh, which paper is the previous slide from? Like the figure that you showed in the previous slide, which of you which this, is this from? This one? Mm -hmm. It's from the same. It's from this uh, psychological medicine one. All right, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's the same. It's in, in the same paper. Thank you. Yeah, so with this, uh, we, we dosed some bio, biomarkers. Uh, one of them was the cortisol, which is a hormone related to stress. And for uh, in our case, we observed that at the baseline, the patients had hypocortisolemia, which is uh, the, the level of cortisol was lower in the patients than in the health controls. And after ayahuasca, we observed that this level for the patients who took ayahuasca were the same of the controls, what did not happen with the placebo group. So the cortisol, the, the ayahuasca modulate the cortisol of these patients make them at the same level um, of the controls. We also, uh, uh, we also investigated this, um, this molecule uh, called BDNF, which is uh, related to neuroplasticity and also seems to be affected in depression. And we also uh, observed that two days after the dosing session, the group that took ayahuasca had the levels of BDNF increased when compared with those from the plus, uh, of the placebo group. And in this case, we also observed that uh, a, a relationship between the improvement in depression and the increase in the BDNF levels. Uh, we also investigate some uh, inflammatory uh, biomarkers, and we found changes in uh, C protein, C reactive protein, which is a marker, uh, inflammatory marker. And here in this, this first uh, figure, we can uh, observe that at the baseline, when we compare the control, the, the, the health volunteers with the patients uh, with depression, we, we see that the patients have increased levels of the CR protein. After the treatment, this, this level were reduced in the patients uh, from ayahuasca group and not from the placebo group. And again, we also observed uh, a correlation between the reduction in the scores of the madres, the depression, depressive scale, and the reductions in the levels of the C reactive protein. Um, to finish, we also um, analyzed some fMRI data, but in this case, we only look at to the health volunteers. And what we did was uh, analyze this uh, resting state data to see if some resting state networks could be modulated by ayahuasca, even 
uh, if you are not doing the effect. So in a subacute way, yeah. I first saw, saw to you uh, that we had uh, a lot of works showing that during the acute effect of ayahuasca, we have some changes. But here we are like, interested to see if one day after the dosing, we still can see some changes, some brain changes. And yes, we, we observed here the modulation of the saliency network, which is involved in, in mood, emotions, and interoception, and also in the default mode network. So we observed that um, increase in ayahuasca in, in, the sali, in the connectivity of a saliency network in the ayahuasca group and a decrease in the connectivity of the DMN. Again, we tried to relate, it, to relate what was happening during the session with, this, with those changes. And here we um, found a positive relation between the changes in effect measured by this HRS scale and the changes in the functional connectivity of those networks, the salines and the DMN. Only specific for the ayahuasca group. So here in, in red, we see ayahuasca and blue, the placebo. So uh, to conclude, what uh, we can uh, learn from this trial was that ayahuasca has a, a rapid antidepressant effect. The underlying effects of ayahuasca uh, are multifactorial and can be since biochemical changes to subtle uh, subjective process. And this trial uh, supports the therapeutic value and safety of the psychedelics when administered in the appropriate setting to help treat um, depression. Here was a part of the team. So this was um, a two and a half years uh, project only for data collection. We started the trial in 2014 and in, in February 2014 and ended the, the data collection in July 2016. Uh, this was part of my thesis, and here is part of the team. Here is Draulio, which is my my was my supervisor and my boss today. We uh, had uh, we worked together here in the Brain Institute in this lab, and part of the team with the psychiatrists and this professor is uh, from the, the the biochemical department, and is that so. Thank you very much. And I'm here for the questions. Thank you very much, Fernanda, for that wonderful talk. Uh, I would like to open the floor for questions. Uh, but before I do, I would like to ask you a question myself. Uh, so the ayahuasca you used for the, um, for the trials, was it like... Um, how was it uh, procured? Like, how did you contact some indigenous practitioners for the brew? Or was the ayahuasca prepared in the lab with the specific uh, sort of uh, uh, amounts of DMT and MAO inhibitors and so on? Yeah, no, uh, we, um... This ayahuasca that we use here was prepared for a friend of us that runs a, a church. It's kind of just, he has a Bahtinia church. It's, a, it's a, one of the churches that use ayahuasca in, in the rituals. And he prepared the, the all amount of ayahuasca we used during the, the, the whole trial. So it's the same ayahuasca during the, these uh, two years, because it's very difficult to have two uh, preparations that are equal, yeah? Because this depends on the amount of the leaves you put and 
Deliana also, and also uh, this with the weather, the, the, the characteristics of the plants change, and this also can contribute to change the, the, the concentrations of DMT and beta carboline. So to avoid that uh, this variation, we ask him to prepare a, a, a huge amount. So he sent to us uh, 10 liters of ayahuasca and we used that preparation. And it's, in, and it's prepared in the same way that he is using during the rituals. So it's the same preparation. Yeah, it was not uh, different because we are using this study. What you did was to dose the, the concentrations of DMT and beta carboline uh, along the time. So to control for that, we did some regular uh, assessment of the concentrations. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Fernanda. Yeah. Now I'd like to open the floor for questions. I think Mika has a question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I do have a question. First of all, thank you so much for the amazing talk. I literally cannot describe how excited I am to hear all of this because it's, this makes my heart pound quite uh, quickly. Uh, but my question was, uh, you, you spoke a lot about um, the, um, the clinical effects and the, the statistical um, uh, data, but I was also wondering uh, you worked with these clients or with these patients, what kind of stories did you get back from them? Uh, well, like, what did it mean for these people that they had this experience? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Ian, so one thing I, I forgot to say is all, uh, all the patients and also the, the health volunteers, they were naive to ayahuasca. So uh, the, this time that they uh, took ayahuasca was the first time. So, um, so when someone is not experienced to this kind of uh, experience to, to, and this kind of substance, so they were naive to ayahuasca and also to any other psychedelic. So it was uh, the first time. Um, so they had a, a variety of, uh, of experience. So that some people had more challenging experience, some uh, difficult time, and the other was more pleasant and more uh, could enjoy uh, more the experience. Um, one thing that uh, it's worth mention is uh, some of the patients, this is specific, of, uh, specific for the patients, some of them have heard to us uh, that ayahuasca, taking ayahuasca was similar to doing a therapy session. So we had one patient that say to me, said to me, yeah, I didn't like that. So one thing we, we asked to them was if they want to uh, take again. So do you, do, do, do you want that, uh, this experience another time? And she, 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 she answered no. No, no way, I don't like it. And why, why you don't like it? And, uh, no, it's the same way, the same thing that I, I, I go through when I'm doing uh, psychotherapy and I don't like. And, and another patient said, okay, it's, it, to me it was the same that doing uh, psychotherapy and that, but it was like more intense. And that's why I like it. So it's, can change a lot the perception if it's good it's it's not good but this is interesting that some patients uh describe it as a therapy session as a, a psychotherapy session and even if you were not asked to say that so we would not uh, ask directly if it was uh, uh similar but they uh, they told us that and yeah so we had a lot, we had, for example, we also had some uh, health volunteers that had very light experience. And even the dose was the same, 
for everybody because it was uh, the dose by kilo. So yeah, it was uh, we, we it was to be the same, but the the, the effects can can vary a lot. So yeah, this guy was a, uh, was telling us that they doesn't feel that, that he don't he don't didn't feel anything different it was like only a little bit uh maybe sleepy but he didn't have any visual effects or big changes and the other other people had really complete psychedelic experience with changes in perception in auditory perception visual perception and a lot of insights also and meaningful uh, experience so it was uh, arranging the range of uh, intensity and uh, the effects the experience were a lot vary a lot cool thank you um can i ask a follow-up question or someone else um, maybe go ahead Mika. no worries um yeah i was wondering indeed the the, um, the mystical experiences that uh, people uh, often attached to uh, Ayayushka uh, uh, trips. Did, did any of those, um, did you hear back from anyone uh, where that trip had such an, a, a big impact on their lives that uh, it's noteworthy? Yeah, we assessed this uh, mystical experience um, using a mystical experience questionnaire, the MEC, that was developed for that. And yeah, some of the, 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 the participants scored very high in this kind of, uh, of questionnaire. But we also had a little, uh, this, I don't know if you are familiar with the, the, the questionnaire. The questionnaire is very specific and has very difficult questions to answer if you are not familiar with this kind of experience. So, it's very precise in a way that can really capture what it's a mystical experience, but also it's a very difficult questionnaire to answer. And most of our participants and especially the patients, they came from a, a very poor uh, uh, environment. So they and social educational levels were, were very low. So sometimes it was very hard to translate the questions. Not translate, not translate because it's not in Portuguese. It was in Portuguese. But even like that, some of the words were, were really difficult to, to, to understand. And so because of that, we, we think that, especially for the patients, we could not have could not measure uh, the, the, the mystical experience. Not because it was not there, but the, 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 the way to measure maybe for us was not the best. But yeah, for the, the controls, sure. A lot of them had scored very high in, in, this, uh, in the mystical uh, experience questionnaire. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mika. So, um... Uh, sorry, another question the from sentence. the audience. Sorry, I, a, I didn't understand the last sentence that you said. Did you say the controls score high on the mystical experience? That's yeah, some of them, some of them, yeah, scored high mm -hmm. as in, in the other studies we see. Right, okay. Because for the controls, we had a lot of university studies, mm -hmm. st students. So it was more, uh, the, the yeah. questionnaire more adapted to, to them. Understandable. Um, yeah. yeah, I have some questions, but if we have any others from the audience, please go ahead. May I ask a question? Yes, George, go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, first of all, I really appreciate the talk. Thank you for that. Uh, I had a question regarding, um, there's a lot of research being done on psychedelics. And uh, if I recall correctly, it's uh, most of the time it's psilocybin or LSD. But I was wondering, what is it that makes ayahuasca like uh, different from those? Because the results are kind of, 
I wouldn't say per se the same exactly, but um, there's reduced symptoms of depression. Um, the default mode network uh, activity is reduced. Um, these are kind of similar results, but what is it that makes ayahuasca like, or is there something that makes ayahuasca different from the other psychedelics? Could you elaborate a bit on that? Thank you, George. Thank you for the question. Yeah, um, I think one thing that uh, it's different with ayahuasca, it's uh, this, uh, some, some people consider a side effect, others consider a part of the process, which has this nausea and vomiting, which are very common in ayahuasca. So uh, this is uh, for the religions group, this is part of the process, the, the purging uh, process. And uh, normally you don't see that with psilocybin and with LCD also. And another thing I, uh, I, I consider that maybe ayahuasca is uh, more new, uh, more know about that, it's the visual phenomena. Uh, even with uh, this this phenomenon, with this uh, visual phenomenon, with the eyes closed, with LCD, LCD, uh, some people describe as um, uh, alterations in the, in the things they are seeing. So, hallucinate, uh, pseudo hallucinations. That the, the the environment can change. With ayahuasca, which is more common, is this kind of uh, mental imagery changes. I think, yeah, but I, I don't know if there's other other things, maybe, but in general, I think the the the, the two things that uh, it's more different is that is this uh, this physical effects, this nausea and vomiting, and sometimes diarrhea, and also the changes in perception that I think it's most on the visual, in the visual system. Okay, and is it because your body is kind of purged from like um, bad influences? That's kind of the mythology behind it uh, among those tribes, right? You're uh, take, consuming this ayahuasca and you're purged of like bad energy. Yes. So is this something that has a kind of psychological effect then which differentiates uh, ayahuasca from like for example lsd because psilocybin for example also when people are like blindfolded they get these uh, really vivid visuals so it's it's kind of the same if you know what yeah. i mean yeah uh, um, yeah i i don't think so because yes, like in, in this in this this persian process is something that are elaborate in the ritual we use. So when using in a ritual with uh, those religions, yes, people say that you are like putting uh, the bad things, the throwing bad things. It's a, a cleansing process. But for us at the hospital, this was not true because they were not uh, um, in contact with this, uh, this, um, believe yeah so for us yeah. they it was like a side effect you 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 took a medicine and and you had some side effects and being nausea nauseating and vomiting is one of the side effects so no i don't think that this could be related to to the improvement but yeah um in the rituals, I think, yes, this is a big part of why people believe uh, they get better and they were like, if it, it, it's not a bad thing. Normally we associate throwing up with a, a bad thing, yeah? And it, it is, it's true, mm -hmm. yeah? It's like a, a, a defense of your body. If you eat something that it's bad to you, you throw up. And but in this case, for, for most of the religions, this is a, a good thing. So this is part of the process. And if he, he, this happened to you, it's because you need it. And it's OK. It's it, it, at the end, it will be good to you.
Okay, thank you, Fernanda. Uh, I believe Marco okay, had a thank question. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Yeah. Um, so, let, staying on this. So, thank you for the for the presentation. Uh, first of all, I thought it was very interesting. There were several things that um, are a bit less known, I think. Um, and so, since you were talking already about the uh, the body, the effects on the body of ayahuasca, but you also talked a little bit about fMRI studies, uh, where I imagine it must be a lot, you know, very challenging uh, if someone has to like puke while they're inside the scanner is a bit of an issue. So you have to like throw away the data, and you really don't want them to like puke inside the scanner. Uh, why I guess you use the experience uh, pee hole in the in the fMRI studies. Um, and so I wonder if if it, that is something that it can be somehow like controlled, you know, if this or if this also experienced people, if they also you know puked as well, like the, or or how how did you let's say uh, address the body effects in the in the, in the neuroimaging studies? Yeah, it's the, the exactly the point that you you bring. It's very doing an fMRI, uh, fMRI is already something that a lot of people don't like. Yeah, because they are like in this tube that it's small and some people has this uh, claustrophobia and it's not very uh, pleasant, uh, a very pleasant experience. So it's why this study that we did to, to investigate the acute effect, we used people that were like uh, taking ayahuasca for years and they take ayahuasca every 15 days. So it's really uh, used to the experience to try to at least compensate for a side to the, the the bad sensations of the the fMRI and but but we don't have anything else so yeah it was only the uh, the strategy was to to bring people that was experienced in in the in, in ayahuasca and some of them uh, had a really bad time, challenging experience, not to, to not puking during the, the, the scanner, but to say that, okay, it was awful. I never will submit myself to, to that experience again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Um, yeah no, for sure. No, I asked because, you know, the, my, my own uh, PhD is all uh, in fMRI. And I, you know, I've been scanned myself a number of times, and so I know, I know how it is, and I understand it's not, yeah, it's not really the the more ecological environment where you want to be doing ayahuasca. <laughs> if you want to yes. kind of some uh, like a nice experience. But, um, the other question I had, uh, so it's a bit more specific, maybe. So I'm not sure if it's interesting for a lot of other people, but. Um, you show, you know, now I found the figure that you that you showed before, which is it's deep in the supplementary material of the of the rapid antidepressant paper, which was why I hadn't seen it before. Uh, but I find it very interesting. We there. had to cut in my in my defense, we had to cut the, the number of figures of the paper. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I just, I, um, no, it's not a criticism, you know, it's just uh, um, but I thought it was an interesting thing because also I'm interested in the in the in vision, in vision and in the perceptual effects uh, of uh, of these of psychedelics. Um, and but you know now uh, in current discourse in the in the cleaning hall side, most of the focus is on the uh, the what, we, what you kind of call the cognitive effects or like the the effects on the on the DMN. But um, you know I have a sense that there is a bit more of a connection between the you know, the first, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious actually, but you know, it's not obvious in science right now that what this connection is between the perceptual effect and the cognitive effects. And so since you've done these studies and you've also looked at, you kind of looked at both things, I was wondering uh, what are your thoughts on the connection between these two aspects? Yeah, one thing that in this uh, last study that I show uh, to you, this that we found a modulation in salients and DMN networks, to control, uh, to see if it was like a, a, a broad uh, change in, in the whole uh, brain, or if it was specific to some, uh, to some networks. 
we did uh, we investigate the visual network and also the um, uh, motor uh, sensor motor network and i don't know if in the paper has the auditory network but we investigate other networks to see uh, that i was was changing that also and we did not see any change so any subacute changes in those networks in the visual for example but one thing that i uh, that some some people discuss about it's the role of these visions in the therapeutic experience and i think that uh, we humans being we trust very much in what we see yeah so we trust more for example in, in a common sense we trust more what we see than what we he uh, hear yeah it's see i i hear something but okay maybe it's a, a sound a noise it's something but if i'm seeing something it's this has a, a power and with psychedelics and with ayahuasca for example some people uh, refer to, to this vision. So when they were under the effect, so they, for example, one of our patients, uh, she had, uh, she lost a sister some years uh, ago before the, 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 the dosing session. And this was one of the, the, the troubles she had in, in, in her life. And during the session, she described it to us a scene where she met uh, her uh, dead sister and she saw that she was in, in, in a very beautiful place uh, surrounded by flowers and it was very peaceful and, and, and beautiful. And she described this, the, the scene, the complete scene, the, the complete scene. And she said that this helped her to see, okay, uh, yeah, maybe my, my sister is, is fine. It's, so in some way, that vision had a contribution to uh, her outcome. Yeah, I, like I cannot, it's a speculation, yeah? It's not a, a, a causation or we do not have a, a how to, or at least we did not investigate this uh, further. But yeah, I think this kind of, um, yeah, this kind of uh, Im mental Im imagery can help in, in that way to, to, to make someone process the same thing, but in another way, in, in, in a way that it's more to, to cope with the situation, I think. So um, can I follow up a little bit on, on Marco's question? Well, first of all, congratulations for all your amazing research. It's very impressive. And yeah, I think I, I, I was having a similar question to Marco, right? Because I was uh, quite impressed by the fact that the visual, um, the effects in the visual cortex were correlated with the, with the therapeutic effects. And well, we also know that the effects on the Lifomo network, um, you know, the ego dissolution is also correlated with the with the therapeutic effects. So I don't know if this is what Marco asked, but whether I was going to ask whether you um, whether you think there's a correlation between maybe more disintegration of the Lifomo network leads kind of like liberates the visual. Uh, cortex or whether you know whether you've thought of looking at at, at whether there's this anti-correlation or, or some fancy analysis between um this sort of a uh, lower uh, networks and higher order networks yeah yeah uh, one problem that i have in, in in this data set is that uh i have not many patients so to run this kind of analysis uh, in fMRI, normally to have the, the statistical power to see something, we have to have more subjects. So uh, for the patients, I only have 10 that took ayahuasca and 10 placebo at the end for the fMRI analysis, because some of them moved, and then I, I lost some subjects. And for now, I didn't find any correlations between this uh, 
neural changes, so the changes in DNA or in the salience or any brain changes, and the uh, and the, the therapeutic effect. But I cannot say if that I if I don't have any I, I, enough uh, subjects or it's because I don't have anything. And also it's um, yeah because. The, the fMRI in this study, with the study with the, the patients, was one day after. So the change that we are observing one day after is, is very subtle. Yeah, one day after the, the, the person is like, it's normal. Yeah, you cannot, you cannot see any, and it's not uh, strong. They, they, they do not have any strong uh, sensations in the, sec in the, the day after. Yeah they can experience some light effects as for example a uh, feeling uh, calm and yeah like a, 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 a good sensations but it's not something strong and so i think it's the combination so i think to to better assess this the question that we are uh, making uh, we need to to do some um, acute effect yeah. okay. fMRI, I think. Yeah. Okay, and I've got another question. Um, it's regarding the image you showed uh, on the Shannon Entropy uh, paper, because um, it seems like, just from that image, it seems like two nodes uh, of the network, you see there when it says after, suddenly those nodes become huge, right? So it seems like there is this reorganization and, and suddenly these nodes become really central in, in the information processing. So I was just wondering if like you could tell us more about that, about which nodes uh, these are. Yeah, I, I don't know which are, but what do you have here is, yeah, the, to before to after, we, we can see that it's like we lost some connections and we sh in some of those others are uh, more strong and yeah that's why the the, the node the, the two nodes here are bigger than the others yeah okay, but we did not it, but yeah but in this case i think in this paper no maybe that's another one a follow-up of this one that's a topographical analysis and it's for the same uh, author, Aline Viol. It's the, 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 the same first author, and it's a follow-up on that one. And I think in this one, she analyzed a little bit better the, about that, the, the nodes. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great. So my questions, actually three, but maybe I'll keep it short. <laughs> the first question is, um, <laughs> Relating to uh, placebo, yeah, placebo groups and the, um, yeah, of course, the ayahuasca uh, group. But um, what do you recall from like other studies of psychedelics and also with ayahuasca? Was it was quite difficult to create a placebo that also keeps the study double blind in a way? Because, of course, you need to the placebo that also introduces the vomiting and the, the, the physical sensations, not to make it actually like realistic. But what, what was the placebo you used in your study? For that so, study? yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to, to ask you all of the questions? No. No, no, no. I, I can is... <laughs> okay so yeah so yeah this is a challenge in the psychedelic field it's to how to make an effective placebo mm -hmm. and i think it's the, the answer is that it, it's not possible or, or it's really complicated to do so in this case we use two strategies was one everyone everybody was naive so if they don't have the experience, they don't know uh, yeah. what to expect. So, okay, this is one thing. And the other thing it was um, try to mimic some of the effects of ayahuasca that are not psychoactive. So this uh, gastrointestinal distress, mm -hmm. we, um, make, we made a placebo that mimics some of this, the, those effects. So people was, was also, were also uh, a little bit sick, a little bit feeling uh, nauseous. 
because of the placebo. So it was develop, uh, we developed here the, the, the placebo developed here with mm -hmm. the the help with the, the, the people from the pharmacy department. And yeah, in, in the paper has the, the recipe. It's like a mixture of um, zinc sulfate, sulfate, uh, uh, um, citric acid, uh, yeast, water, and caramel colorant to make brown. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> No, I didn't know you actually, because you remember from a few years ago, this was in the making to see that it actually mimics some of the physical effects. But I didn't know you actually yes. in your study. It's very interesting. Um, my second question was relating to, um, if you know if, you, if your team has done any studies on the, because you know focus on subacute mainly uh, within the seven day period. But I recall from, for example, some studies with uh, meditation actually, but with longer term use, so actually several months or several years, um, default mode ne network activity actually um, permanently changes. And I believe prefrontal cortex, for example, gets like, stimulated, whereas the occipital lobe portion of it more gets, uh, gets down regulated more. Um, but is your team also currently focusing on the longer term effects of, of for example, multiple ayahuasca um, or users who use ayahuasca multiple times or beyond kind of the subacute effects? Because that would be very interesting as well, I think. Okay. Uh, we are not doing any, any kind of the. Uh and type of the studies like that here now in, in my lab. But I collaborate with some uh, studies um, run in Spain a few years ago uh, with the, the group of the, the professor Hiba, Jordi Hiba. And yeah, in, in his group, they uh, evaluate people who were like uh, regular users of ayahuasca for a lot of years. And they uh, did uh, MRI to assess brain uh, structure changes. So yeah, we found uh, some uh, cortical thickness change in, in volunteers that use ayahuasca for like, I, I think it was two years at least. And we, in, in, it was interesting because if we found changes in the hubs of the DMN, so we found changes in the anterior cingulate cortex and also in the posterior cingulate cortex. And those changes in the posterior uh, cingulate cortex was correlated with changes in, pers in personality. So, yeah, so this, this is the stuff that I know that have, have assessed um, brain changes in, in uh, after long-term use. But now here we don't have any 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 study like that. No, oh, thank you for sharing. So I think that's a very interesting, at least with, um, you know, with meditation, I'm not sure what this with other questions. Yeah, I can send you the, the reference. It's it's Bozo. Uh -huh. The guy is, is Jose, Jose Carlos Bozo. It's Bozo 2013, maybe. It's a European pharma, uh, pharmacology journal, I think. B O Z O. B O U S O. U. Uh, Bozo. Bozo. Perfect. I'll look it up. Thank you so much. Um, I right, sorry. My last question was actually because the um, uh, the regulation of or the that you found your study the um, decrease in cortisol and CRP levels uh, is actually novel information for me. I didn't hear yet about uh, before about ayahuasca influencing. Um, yeah, it's actually bio biochemical markers like this. Um, but yeah, do you know more about this interaction within? Because I can imagine that because cortisol right is a stress hormone, and uh, CRP as well. It was like a little bit decreased, but not uh, not usually because you would see decreased inflammation. But could it just be related to decreased uh, psychological stress? Then also leading uh, to a decrease in cortisol levels and uh, CRP levels, or do you think, or do you have some evidence that ayahuasca actually directly interacts with these compounds? Yeah, uh, this question I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know if they if they know why. I know that we choose to 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 investigate cortisol because it seems that depression changes these uh, HPA. Um, regulation yeah so it's why we 
try to set cortisol. But the, the biochemical um, the biochemical changes that happen that are caused by ayahuasca that ended up to change cortisol, I don't know if they 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 know why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yes, one thing, medicine, so I'm very uh, and <laughs> it's, it's very yeah and mm-hmm. but one thing that it's in this study with the, the cortisol modulation we also show that during the session there is a, a little increase also in the cortisol levels. But in the controls, this after the, the session, it's okay. And for the patients uh, from ayahuasca group, this uh, maintain the, this, this increase in the levels, which in our case was a good thing because our patients had mm-hmm. at the beginning hypocortisolemia, which is yeah. not a very with the cortisol. We can the, in the literature we can found. For the both the, the both sides, like uh, some patients has hypercortisolemia and some yeah and some hypo. And it seems it's not clear why, and it seems that is related of the, the time of the illness, the, the time of being depressed, because uh, as it, it seems that at the beginning. When someone gets stressed, get, get depressed at the, uh, the, the first time, the system uh, increases the levels of uh, cortisol. But when the time passes, this leads to a, um, a chronic stress, and then the system down regulates, re- regulated. So it's why some of the patients uh, present low levels of, the corti- of cortisol. And in our case, the, the patients were uh, having depression, some of them for 11 years or more than five years. So it's one thing that we believe could be influencing this, uh, the levels of cortisol. But it's not clear, it's a lot of debate. debate. Yeah, well, my follow-up question on that is, uh, did you measure, or do you run a few studies that measure cortisol at specific times a day, for example? Because cortisol yes. in general fluctuates during the day, right? So Yeah, for, uh, yeah as the cortisol has uh, this uh, circadian variation, yeah, yeah we collected the, 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 the saliva and the, the, and the blood at 7 o'clock ah, perfect. for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Seven, uh, at the morning, 7 o'clock because it's the, the, the peak of the cortisol. And you mentioned earlier that in your patient group, so, so the whole patient group with cardiomyces uh, and depression, you found a mixture of hypocortisonism and also hypercortisonism. So no, in, in, in our there... case was hip- hypocortisolemia. Hypo. Hypo. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. But in the literature, when you look to, to other uh, studies, it's like controversial. Some of them found hyper and some people. That's very interesting. Thank you. It's new information. Great. And I I will apologize again, but I have to go. (laughs) I have to go (laughs) because I'm uh, having some people wait to wait here in next room to the other presentation. Yeah. (laughs) I'm so sorry for that. And we like Mm -hmm. schedule so many months uh before that but in the last minute this uh yeah. these visitors came here and <laughs> we have to, to go yeah <laughs> so we took a lot of your time already thank you so much would you mind perhaps um sharing an email so people can ask you questions through, through yes that was actually my question as well oh yeah. okay my email is is here yeah yeah perfect then people can uh, they still have questions um, wait uh, yes that. No, yeah, this actually will be online. Feel, so. Yeah, feel free to, to write me and and yes. again it was a pleasure to be here. Thank and, you. It was a pleasure having you. And Thank congratulations, you so congratulations for the initiative. It's very nice. I, I, I look at to the 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 whole uh, the other presentations and it I I, I try to I will try to attend some. Uh, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. So actually, my other question was, do you by any chance know, for example, Isabel Wiesner or Luis Felipe or 
because I, I remember like I'm from the Campinas group. I uh, spent some time there and I remember actually that a friend of mine then went to Natal and I was supposed to come with her to your research center, I think, but I, I couldn't go in the end. But... Yeah. Is your Luis? With the Campinas group. Yeah, Luis Felipe. Is from Luis Felipe, yes. I know yes. him, yeah. Oh, he's the next speaker. He was actually yeah. in the chat before as well. I think, with you. Cool. Yeah, we hope to see you as well with your other lectures. It's very, very I exciting so. to have all these participants. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you for your time. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you very much. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye.